new birth, away from original sin. A new birth. So, the next time somebody asks you if you've been born again, you can say, of course, and give them your baptismal name. I'm an old Baptist, so I can say that. And of course, we do depend upon faith for baptism. No, certainly not the faith of a baby, but the faith of the parents, which is why it's so important that we make sure parents are part of the church, an active part of the church, and that they understand how important it is to raise that small child in the church, in the faith, in obedience to Jesus Christ. John the Baptist came and then Christ came. And baptism became something of major importance. What did Jesus tell his apostles at the end of Matthew, the gospel according to him? What did he say? Go into the world and do what? Baptize in my name. And make sure all people follow my commandments. Kind of a double thing there, isn't it? Baptize first. Teach second. You know, babies, God bless them, are not born innately with a God-driven moral compass. Somebody has to give them direction. Right? It's not true what Michael Jordan is saying, just follow the children, follow the children. If I follow the children every time my wife would let me buy M&M's in the grocery store, I'd lie on the floor and kick a fit. <laughs> the children are loving Impressionable, and they have to be brought up with someone letting them know how Christ wants them to live. And those someone's are parents and godparents. And if they don't know, they can't teach. And unfortunately, or fortunately, it's up to the priest to discern if they are part of the church. And they can do the baptism. I remember one time, I don't know if I've told this before, I had a friend of mine, a stock car driver down at uh, Bradford Speedway, a drum raceway when they had one. And he just had a baby. And we were in the Bowler Hotel enjoying the atmosphere. And he came up to me and said, Come on, Corny, you can go up and baptize my kids in the seventh, you're at the end of the seventh race. I'm going to witness. I said, you know, I really can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds nice, but there has to be something a bit more substantive there if we're going to baptize the child. And yeah, I really should be in church. And you really should be going to church. Not the racetrack. Of course, there are times in crises when you can baptize me. I can baptize you. Can baptize. There's a question of imminent death in your request. Another friend of mine, a Methodist minister, said, Well, why don't you know? You really believe that baptism is salvation? I said, well, no. That's not the point. If I did believe that, I'd get a big bucket of holy water, head down to New York City on the subways, and by God, I'd baptize everybody. <laughs> just rip left and right, just like that as a Spurgeon's. But salvation is built on baptism. It's built on the whole process. It's built on the calling down of the Holy Spirit to change the person who's baptized. It's built on the parents and the godparents 
who infuse that child with faith in God and instruct him in the way Jesus Christ wants him to live. Continues through confirmation and on through all the sacraments, including marriage. By the way, I'm taking Canon Law. That's a lot of fun. Um, took it last uh, semester. And this semester is a four credit hour course, so every Wednesday I have three hours of it in the morning and three hours of it in the afternoon over at Christ the King Seminary under Monsignor Lippin. And I noticed on the schedule, we have six sessions, 18 hours on the sacrament of matrimony. <laughs> oh boy. And uh, so you think the church thinks that, that's important? Matrimony? That sacrament? You think that? 18 hours. Canon law on marriage. I was telling somebody today, I said, you know, we have a very judicial church. Okay? And some people don't like that because uh, the litigiousness of it makes them not want to be part of the church because he was. Somebody's telling you what to do. Somebody is. God is. But the truth of the matter is, the reason why the church is so much like that is because of the history of humanity. Okay? Every time humankind has drifted away from God, way back in the dark ages with the people of Israel, what has happened? Well, you've had the Tower of Babel, uh, the fall from the garden, the golden calf, uh, the crucifixion of Christ. And you can follow it right up through our history all the way through. Crusaders attacking Constantinople. Um, World War II and the obscene things that went on in the Reich. Every time we drift away from God and begin to think that we know how to operate things better than he does, we end up in deep Walk or something else. And so at the beginning, when you have a child you know who's being baptized, even if nobody asks you to be baptized, even if you're not a grandfather, grandmother, or a parent, go out of your way to make sure that those people know we're going to raise that child, and it's not an easy job. I had three of them. And at one time or another, I probably could have killed all three of them. But I loved them, so I did. Go out of your way to say to those people, please, let me help. If they can't get to church, volunteer to take them. If they have trouble with their religious education or their prayers, volunteer to tutor Be Christ to them. Give them a chance. Give them a chance to become a whole Christian unified with Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.